Hey everyone, welcome to Home Matters, the podcast where we help you make the most informed decisions for your home renovation and improvement projects. Whether you're swapping out windows, tackling a kitchen makeover, or getting a new roof, we've got the tips, the tricks, and the insights that you need. So let's get into today's topic. Welcome to the Home Matters podcast, where we discuss all things related to creating a comfortable and functional living space. I'm your host, Alex, and today we're tackling the topic of renovating with a purpose. Whether you're planning a renovation project for yourself or a loved one, this episode is really about giving you some tips for creating homes that are accessible and age-friendly. So let's get started. Let's first talk about the concept of universal design. I was first introduced to the concept of universal design about 15 years ago when I, well, a little bit more than 15 years ago, I actually entered the construction industry in 2004. So really 20 years ago, but it it was not until a few years that I was in the industry that I realized that there was a need. We worked in with a lot of residential clients in Florida. And as you may imagine, Florida has a lot of retirees and people with different needs. So what we found very quickly was that a lot of the homes we were renovating, whether we were changing out a bathroom, uh, a kitchen, the flooring, a lot of the upgrades needed to, to have what is called universal design. And the principle there of universal design, and you can look this up online at nkba.org or any of the other major associations within the construction industry, the concept is all about inclusivity. It's about building with the flexibility for anyone, any age. And it, it keeps in mind uh, accessibility. When I say accessibility, I mean anyone with any differing ability. So even if they are disabled, if they are on a wheelchair or anything like that, right? But at the same time, Many designers incorporate a lot of simplicity to the process. Um, You don't want to overcomplicate this, right? So what I want to do is just explore how universal design goes beyond the accessibility aspect and how it benefits people of all ages and abilities and capabilities. So let's talk about creating a barrier-free space. It is very important that when you are redesigned, you, especially when it comes to the bathroom and the kitchen, these are two of the rooms that you're going to spend a lot of your time in uh, moving around, right? Whereas a living room and a bedroom, you typically go in and you then are sedentary, right? So you're just in one place. Whereas with the kitchen and the bathroom, when we're in those rooms, we are moving around. So bathroom, think about, you know, creating, you know, installing bathroom bars, installing shower heads that are accessible no matter what height someone is in, uh, creating a shower uh, enclosure that the door opens with no obstruction at the bottom, right? Um, Maybe you put in a bench for someone to be able to take a shower sitting. Uh, Perhaps if you need a a bathtub, then it's a walk-in bathtub, right? And there are companies that specifically install these types of products. And so when you're looking at the kitchen, it's a little bit more functionality, right? You're trying to create a, uh, you know, that triangle between the kitchen, the stove, and the fridge. You are trying to create um, a, a, a lot of functionality there, right? And I think it really truly starts with the appliances. So you got to make sure that, you know, for example, instead of having a microwave that's all the way at the top, you have a microwave drawer. Sorry, you can buy those those types of microwaves. Much easier to work with. Um, buying a a stove that is not using gas but rather electric that's going to be safer for you flat surface right um dishwasher uh, there's lots of different widths heights for dishwashers if you don't have to use a dishwasher very often maybe you just do a half dishwasher which is like a drawer and then for the fridge you use a fridge that is you know split in the at the top where both doors open for the refrigerator and then at the bottom you have the freezer. That's going to be a lot more accessible to anyone with any uh, physical challenge, right? 
So those are some of the things. And then when you think about the cabinets as well, um, both in the bathroom and in the kitchen, the, whoever builds the cabinets, the, what they want to do is go up a little bit higher and leave enough room for you to get your feet under there. So maybe the cabinets are going to be a floating cabinet. Uh, maybe that more of a European style where it's floating. You see this at hotels where probably about 15 to 18 inches from the floor, there is no, no obstruction right? So that you can get your feet on there. So almost like think about a, a vanity, right? A, a vanity that you sit at. Um, other things that you uh, want to address is certainly the flooring. You know, what type of flooring surface is going to do best with the universal design? And when we say which covering is going to do best, you have to think about not just the functionality, but also maintenance. You know, it's going to be much harder for someone to maintain a um, uh, carpet than it will for them to maintain a tile floor or a, a luxury vinyl, right? And it could still give you that look and that durability. So what I've seen over the years is that move from, you know, tile to uh, laminate flooring. Uh, and then now you see the luxury vinyl tiles, right? Or luxury vinyl planks, where those are laid down, very simple process to, to actually lay down this floor. You can lay it over tile by just using an underlayment. But what it does is, unlike carpet, it doesn't impede your ability uh, um, and, and it also reduces your risk, right? With carpet, you are, if you're, let's say, using crutches uh, or you have an issue with walking, you may be, it, it may be a bigger tripping hazard. Um, same thing for someone in a wheelchair trying to haul around a wheelchair, um, move around, I should say, in your wheelchair is much harder on carpet than it is on a uh, surface like luxury vinyl uh, planks or tiles. And then when it comes to the uh, maintenance, it's also going to be much easier to maintain a luxury vinyl floor than it is. And it's still a little bit softer than marble or tile. So it kind of gives you both um, the functionality, but also comfort. We're all looking for comfort, right? Now let's go a little bit beyond the doorways um, and, and and look look different areas, right? One of the biggest benefits of doing a complete remodel now, and I'm talking about if you're going to do a complete remodel, is to rearrange the placement of the walls, some of your walls. So if it's not a load bearing wall, then clearly you can make knock one down and make a, a hallway wider. I remember when we were in the remodeling business for years, we did that a lot where you were able to actually remove an entire wall and expand the width of the hallway to, you know, 40, 48, uh, five inches or even wider in some cases. Right. And the same thing for the doorways. You want to make the doorway uh, much wider. And while there are specific guidelines and suggestions. Obviously, you can buy standard door sizes. You can also go beyond that. Now, when it comes to installing adjustable um, fixtures, um, that 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 um, is a completely different animal, I would say, right? Because, you know, something like a countertop and a cabinet, if you're not doing a complete remodel, it's kind of hard for you to change the height right? And so you're thinking about like mobility level. Is a cabinet going to be 30 inch or 36 inches off the floor? Is it going to have that space under? Again, if you're not doing a complete remodel, it makes it much harder. So if you are working with a home improvement professional, make sure you address those, uh, you know, uh, uh, topics because if, if they're telling you they can't do it, it's probably because of the material. You When you pull apart material, sometimes, especially like a countertop, it doesn't always stay together and it's not the contractor's fault. So you as the homeowner, you really have to decide, do I have the budget to do all of these things? So you start to, when you're, when you're thinking about making a house um, or a home um, universal design, have that universal design aspect of it, you have to go area by area. And like I said, you know, you really start with the, the kitchens, the bathrooms, and then you go to the doorways. And then you can start to look at the fixtures and things like the countertops and cabinets, right? Lighting and visibility is certainly important. You know, um, proper lighting can definitely create safe and accessible living uh, throughout your house, uh, front yard, backyard, inside the house, right? Um, 
of course, uh, often it depends if you are on the second floor, if you live in an apartment or if you live in a two story home, there are things there that you have to address as well, right? So you might need a lift that goes up the staircase. Those are very, very expensive. Um, but I did have many clients in those days that would install those lifts and they can cost, you know, upwards of $10,000. Uh, you also want to look at different government programs uh, and different uh, states and municipalities, often they, they will have certain uh, grants or rebates where they incentivize companies to come in that work with this type of equipment and with contractors who are um, who, who, who are certified to do universal design. And I think it's important to talk about that. Uh, we had gotten a certification for universal design because we were really committed to it. So if you are going to hire someone to do universal design in your home, make sure that they are certified to do such a thing, right? Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the smart home technology. You know, there are so many benefits of the different technologies that have um, uh, come out in, in recent years, you know, everything from voice activated controls, uh, which may be something like an Alexa or something on your phone where you are connected to an app and you can activate, you know, everything from your lighting to your sprinklers to uh, fans and much more, right? To motion sensors and cameras that you put around the house. This way you, you're not having to bounce around all over the place. And then you have like smart therm thermostats, which all, all of these technologies, in my opinion, it, it promotes the independence for anyone seeking um, universal design, especially for elderly people who may not have, you know, if they don't have family locally or, or even if they do, the family can't be there all the time or they don't have a home health care assistant, you're, what you're looking for here is comfort, you know. Um, and so these are the little things that a, a universal design expert, certified expert is going to be able to come in and have that conversation with you so that you can make your home um, accessible and so that it can grow with you as you age. And that's it. That's that's a wrap for this episode of the Home Matters podcast. I hope you found these tips uh, for renovating with a purpose, insightful and inspiring. Remember, by incorporating universal design principles into your renovation projects, you can create homes that are not only accessible, but also are welcoming to people of all ages and abilities. Join us next time as we continue to explore ways to make your house a home. Until then, happy renovating. I'm Alex signing off. Thanks for tuning in to the Home Matters podcast. Remember, a great home starts with making smart choices. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please hit that subscribe button so you never miss out on a new episode. For more resources or to get in touch with a trusted local contractor, check out localcontractor.co. Until next time, take care and happy renovating.